Hi, I'm Tim Colbego from Image IQ. I'm here with Amit Vasanji, our Chief Technology Officer. It's October uh, when we're mm -hmm. recording this, so we made it to fall. Uh, I hope you're all uh, doing well. This is a video that's in a series of small, short, I guess we call them mini webinars mm -hmm. that we're doing for folks um, to talk about some of the imaging that Amit, you mm -hmm. and your team have seen over the years to help people understand what's going on, how the imaging works, and then talk a little bit about how people are analyzing those mm -hmm. images because that's kind of our passion. Mm -hmm. So what we thought we'd do is kind of follow a pretty standard approach to this. Uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, talk about the kind of assay it is, who, who mm -hmm. uses the assay. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, how the images, how the assay is actually done, mm -hmm. and then what kind of analysis is done and what options there are for other analysis. Right. Make sense? Yep. Great. Well, let's get started. So I guess we're starting to talk about the DAB stain mm -hmm. assay. How, how does that work? What is it? Who's doing it? What, what's kind of the key thing there? Yeah, so DAB is a chromogen, so you can apply it just like you would do a fluorescent antibody, um, and um, instead it's a color image. So you can apply okay. it to tissue sections, and you're basically you're you're using it to stain against a, a primary antibody. Okay. So you're looking for a protein of interest, and you're stable, you're labeling with DAB. So DAB is a brown chromogen. So okay. <laughs> um, so it, it's challenging to analyze in an image because brown is. Um, basically, a mixture of all of the colors. Right. And so, it's almost as bad as grayscale. I mean, yes. It's not quite a grayscale that's, image, but it's close. That's right. right. So, yeah. I mean, it's preferable to use a fluorescent dye, but sometimes you don't have a choice. So, okay. um, sometimes people use dab. So, um, generally, dab is it's agnostic to what you stain with. So, it can be any primary. It can be used for any any kind of uh, tissue section that you have. So, you know, there's no um, there's no sort of requirements for when you would use dab or okay. what what kind of sections you would use dab on. So, so everybody's potentially using yeah, it. Yeah. Well, and I know, I mean, even as we sit here, we're recording this relatively early in the Image Quantify life. Right. 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 I mean, it's, a, it's a relatively new offering that we're offering. And this is probably one of the images we've seen most coming right. into the website, right. Right, oddly right. enough, right. which is kind of funny. So, right. okay, very cool. And so, what? How does the imaging work? So you do you do stain histological right. cross sections kind right. of thing, right? And right. then is it is it you know basically? It's just, so it's not fluorescence imaging. Then, no, no, it's, it's just uh, just bright field transmission bright field? Yep. imaging. So you have a color camera, or you have a camera with um, a, a RGB filter on it, and you acquire images. And pretty pretty simple to acquire these images, especially given that you don't need fluorescence. So you don't need an, uh, a lamp, a fluorescent lamp, to acquire any of these images. Um, and it's easy to look through in the eyepiece. And so it's the general way that histopathologists used to look at, you know, staining for antibodies. You Got look it. through an eyepiece and say whether it has it or it doesn't. You don't have to worry about fluorescence. So, Got it. Got it. Um, in terms of magnification, it really depends on what your your DAB is targeting. If it's small things, with small uh, proteins within organelles and cells, you probably want a high mag image. If you just care about where it's localizing in a big piece of tissue, then you can use a low power objective. Got it. Got it. So really just, it, it's all over the yeah, map yeah, on this one, right? Right. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So are there any variations on the on the procedure, or is it a pretty standard thing? Um, the only difference is sometimes you can use a counter stain. So if you do dab, you just basically get brown on your tissue section, texture, okay. in, your, in your tissue section. So it's just like if you had no antibody, you compare it to the dab, and you can tell whether it's positive or negative, but you don't see where the rest of the cells are. So sometimes you use a counter stain like hematoxylin to see where all of your nuclei are. And so that gives you a sort of more context for where the rest of the um, rest of your structures are within your tissue. Um, you can also use the uh, serial section and do like uh, H and E on that section to see where you are. But it's not a one to one. So often they'll do a counter stain like hematoxylin. They'll do a counter stain. So, yeah. and that's a different color. Different color, right? And so you've got to dif differentiate right. between the two, right. and then figure right. out. Right. And so it's not brown. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so that has drawbacks too. Right. Um, usually uh, hematoxylin is blue, so you'll get uh, nuclei that looks like blue. Some of your tissue will be a sort of a bluish tinge, but then you get a crossover with the DAPI sometimes. If you, or sorry, the DAB. So if you're using a heavy amount of DAB, you'll get sort of leaching, and so you'll see some of that in the tissue. So, so, so technique becomes Yeah, yeah, so important. you have to be very careful. And if you, if you don't take the images just right and you have issues with the alignment of your microscope, you will get fringes of tissue that show up as brown. It's just an artifact of bifringence, right? right and so okay. you end up having to make sure you don't segment that out, especially if you're looking for a dab that's not as dark as you expect it right. to be. So. Got it, got it, got it. So when people go to analyze these mm -hmm. images, right, 
um, you know, we, we always talk here, you know, being a software company right. and an image analysis, right. we like the software-based image analysis, right. but we see a lot of folks mm -hmm. who do, who are looking at these images, you know, looking right. through the microscope and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What are they generally looking for? Um, generally, just where the dab is and how much they have in this tissue section. So you sometimes, and that's where the hematoxylin is helpful. You can sort of normalize it based on how many nuclei you have. Um, but, you know, some of these can be big, massive blobs of, you know, dab, and you want to qu quantify how many you have, um, how big those objects are, um, and sometimes if you want to do it on a cellular level, you have to basically compare it to um, your counter stain. So got it. you got this many nuclei in your field of view and this much dab in your field of right, view. Right, so. and so that can take a long time. Right. And quantifying it, so do you see people doing a lot of the, you know, we always joke, right, yeah. the, the one to five, hey, you yeah. know, this kind of looks yeah. like a lot, a yeah. little. Yeah, yeah. there's a one to five, there's some, you know, using imaging and thresholding and things like that. Um, often people will use intensity as a measurement. That's a bad way of doing that like because color intensity. Yeah, which okay. you, you can do it with fluorescence. There's a one. Sometimes there's an often a one-to-one -one comparison between how much antibody you have and how much fluorescence you have okay. until you peg at 255 gray levels. Right. With Dab, you've got basically an intense blob of brown. It's kind of right. hard to quantify how, right. how brown it is. Well, it goes back to what you said before, is it also depends on how much sting you right. use and if you oversaturate it. Right. Is exactly. that part of it, too? Yep. Yep. That's, that's part of it. Cool. And so there are some software pieces out there, yep. right, that, that do this kind of stuff. Right. I mean, whether right. it's open source right. freeware mm -hmm. or pay for wear or mm -hmm. stuff like this. You know, one of the things we've talked about a lot in, in thinking about the image quantify mm -hmm. stuff is that, mm -hmm. you know, when you do that, you get stuff that's uncontrolled. Mm -hmm. The last person to use it knows mm -hmm. how it was run, and it's hard to right. reproduce your your, your right. results, right? So why don't we take 30 seconds here and just talk a little bit about the IQBot stuff, right. because I think that would interest people. Um, for those of you who are watching this maybe for the first time and haven't watched our other videos, real quick on, on Image Quantify. ImageQuantify.com is a web service that allows you to basically, I like our little logo here, upload, click, data. Right. Um, so you upload your images, you select what we call an IQ bot to do the analysis mm -hmm. on those images. In this case, you select your dab, our dab mm -hmm. stain analysis mm -hmm. IQ bot. And then what will happen is that IQ bot will run and it will deliver you your results package. Mm -hmm. And that results package has a lot of things in it. And I think the pictures you see there at the bottom kind of represent that. Right. Right? You get overlay images mm -hmm. and data, a little certificate that talks mm -hmm. about how it was validated, mm -hmm. and you get, you get some of that stuff. But Maybe we could talk a little bit about how what that IQ bot delivers is more helpful than mm -hmm. what people are kind of doing manually. Right. right. So if you were going to use something off the shelf like ImageJ, you would generally convert it to a color space and then do thresholding. So depending on the color space you use, you can get a sort of mixed bag on the results. And you know you can extract red from brown and say this is how much brown you have, but it's a surrogate for brown, not really brown. So right, right, right. Um, we take an approach that's more, um, it looks examines a color cube and it d defines in terms of RGB or whichever color space we use, how what brown represents. And then it basically iterates on it until you get a good representation of brown and then it segments brown in every image. So, got it, got it. Um, so it's less biased on somebody actually using a slider bar to slide and threshold an image. So. Right, right, right. And then ultimately you end up getting like it's in our little pop-up right. box here, total tissue area, right? right? Which is which is good yeah. and hard to measure manually. Right. I mean, it takes right. forever, right. Right? right? You know, that's tough. Right. And then the other stuff is actually starting to count and measure regions. Right, so right? objects that could be nuclei or it could be just massive objects that are in the um, image, and then it tells you um, how, the count of those and the area of each of those. So you can okay. have a big sort of uh, histogram of those objects in the, in the image, and you can choose whatever you want to do, whether it's a standard deviation or a sum or a mean of those objects. So. Got it, got um, it. Well, the other cool part is, too, and, and we, we this has always worked well for your publications mm -hmm. and stuff, you want to show what your analysis did. So you get these kinds of images that you see up here on the screen, which are really, um, I guess, when we put the video mm -hmm. in, they'll be right above us like that. So yeah, we, can, right, right. we can point up right, like the weather right. people, right? Um, but they, you get these images that kind of overlay where the dab was detected, right? Right, right. And, you want to make sure that the algorithm worked well for your images, and so the best way is to look at the image, original image and your overlay image side by side and say, yeah, I did a good job or no. So. Got it. And even if you expect, if you have a big hunk, uh, piece of tissue and you want to know where the dab is, it helps you know, identify where helps the dab is. Helps you see it, right. So these come with, yep. and that, that's kind yep. of important. Yep. And you know, what, the nice part about this kind of approach that we've seen, and certainly, like we said, a lot of people have benefited from already, mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, it's, it's automated, it's mm -hmm. reproducible. Mm -hmm. So you give it the same image, right. you kind of get the same answer every time, yep. which is which is super right. super helpful, right? And it's it's fairly quantitative, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's fast, mm -hmm. and it we think it's cheaper than spending a bunch of time looking through yep. microscopes. So yep. that that's super cool. Yep. Well, outstanding, um, Amit. Uh, thanks for thanks for sure. the time. Hopefully everybody found that that useful. You know we. 
Um, if, if you'd like, you know, certainly send us, drop us an email or provide us your feedback if these kinds of little mini webinars mm -hmm. are useful for you and you, and you, you know, have the opportunity to learn mm -hmm. some of, from, from our experience. Yeah, and no. just one thing to keep in mind is, you know, it's always important to, and you'll see this, it'll probably be repeated over and over again for different IQ bots, make sure you have controls for your images. So right. if oh, you're yeah. going to do this, you know, have a, an unstained piece of tissue or just a uh, tissue that hemat has hematoxyl in, so you're basically, um, you're creating a configuration for your microscope as well as the analysis. Got it. That's a good point. Yeah. And so, you know, like you said, if we have questions mm -hmm. about it, you know, give us a call, visit the website, uh, drop us an email, carrier pigeon, yeah. whatever works. Right. And, uh, and it sounds good. So, well, thanks very much for joining us, Amit. Thanks again. Sure. And uh, hopefully we'll do a lot more of these because I think people mm -hmm. are finding them useful.